Chapter 15 starts talking about ethics. Now, ethics very much follows on from corporate governance, because again, it's all to do with the way that you should act as a company. As we have said in previous chapters, one of the things to realise with F1 is that it's very much a stepping stone to topics that you're going to see later on. F2 and F3 are exactly the same. All the things that you see in F3, all the double entry you see in F3, you need again at F7, and you need it again at P2. But it's obviously going to be following on. With F2, all the stuff you do on things like variances, you see again at F5, you see it again at P5, it obviously moves on. With F1, a lot of the things that we're doing in this particular paper, particularly the later chapters, you see again, but the trouble is you don't see them in one place. F2 goes to F5, goes to P5. F3 goes to F7, which goes on to P2. But F1 sort of goes all over the place, to be honest. Bits of it will appear again in F8. Bits of it will appear in P1. Bits appear in P3. Bits appear in P5. Bits appear in P7. So one of the reasons why the last part of this notes is very much a little topic and a little topic and a little topic is because then later papers they're all going to be expanded and you're going to see a lot more of them so this is trying to give you an overview an idea of the kind of topics that will become important but in later papers and as i say one of them is ethics ethics is going to be like our corporate governance all to do with the way that we do things this will become a very big deal when you get to p1 so first of all what are we talking about when we're talking about ethics? It's all to do with goodness and badness. In other words, it's not the same as whether something is legal or not. If something is illegal, it means you must not do it. You would be breaking the law. So it's very clear, that's illegal, don't do it. That is legal, that's okay. But what ethics is to do with is you shouldn't do something. Now, the trouble is, that's a bit of a more complicated area. Let's look at the law. That's illegal. We mustn't do it. Let's think about whether we think we should do something or not. So, for example, ethical organisation, ethical decisions are things like how fast should we chase our debtors should we chase our receivables? As long as we're not breaking the law, should we go around to their houses and go and collect the money? It's not breaking the law, but is that something that ethically we should do? So, why is ethics becoming important? Because customers are starting to think that it's more important. So, therefore, they will be more likely to deal with companies that they feel are ethical, that are going to treat them fairly, Investors are more likely to, do, to want to buy shares in companies which they feel are ethical. So there's a big overlap here with corporate governance because, again, we're talking about the way we treat other people outside the organisation. So ethical behaviour should be part of your corporate governance. This is the way we treat customers. This is the way we treat employees. This is the way we treat suppliers. It could be a differentiator. Now, we talked about the body shop in the last chapter. Another example is the co-op bank. In the UK, there is one particular bank who have made it clear for a number of years now that there are certain industries that they will not invest in. So they won't invest in defence industries. They won't invest in pharmaceutical companies that do testing on animals. There are certain in industries and companies they will not invest in. So because of that, because of that strong ethical stand, there are a number of people who only will invest with them because they are happy with where their money will be invested and where their savings will be spent. So it could be a way of differentiating yourself from your rivals. You can use it to reassure your shareholders because, again, shareholders will be more comfortable with the idea we're going to behave in a particular way. And it could help with your staff. Your staff will probably be happier to work for a company knowing that the company is behaving in a sensible way. What about ethics as far as the individual is concerned? From the customer's point of view, ethical companies will change 
when the customer changes. So if we decide as customers we want something different, the company will change as well. Repeating the point that we've just made, we will often choose people in preference to somebody else. Now, as an example of that, um, when my wife and I are doing the cleaning, which we do at home, although I have to say to both, my wife does most of it because I can't stand doing it, we could buy lots of different household cleaners. There are a big range of them, but we tend to buy one in particular because it is better for the environment. So whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's what it advertises itself as. So we will buy that one in preference to all the other ones because we feel it's behaving more ethically. We, beha we believe it's taking its social responsibilities more seriously. So that's why we spend the money with them. As I say, I have no idea if it actually makes any difference at all. From the employee's point of view, so somebody working for the company, there will be fewer difficult decisions. I have got a customer and I'm not sure whether I'm supposed to chase them for their money, how much I'm supposed to chase them, how aggressive I'm supposed to be with them. I have got my manager who has said I need to collect the money, but the customer has said that they haven't got it. Ethical framework would give me a way of saying to my manager, look, I cannot do any more at the moment because I have to follow these rules and I can't do anything more at the moment. So in a way, the idea behind having an ethical framework is so that the employee, to a certain extent, is protected from the manager getting upset with them. Why didn't you go out and hassle that customer to get the money out of them? Because the ethical framework that this company employs means that I can't. So it's to protect the employee. Again, because of that, you may want to choose to work for particular companies. Now, that, again, might mean that ethical companies will get the choice of who applies to them. That means the recruitment and selection will be a lot easier because they'll get the best people applying there. Why would you want to go and work somewhere where you know that the customers are going to be treated badly, is the argument. So it could help you with your customers. It could help you get and keep employees. Over the page, ethical considerations. Here are just a few of the kind of things that we're talking about. So, manufacturing companies, pollution, I've already mentioned that. Sourcing, where are we getting our raw materials from? How much are we paying for them? Are we paying a fair price? Are we paying on time? Or are we saying, we're a big company, you're a very small supplier, we'll pay you when we're ready. Pharmaceuticals, what do they get tested on? Do they get tested on animals or not? Pricing. This has been a big issue over the last few years. Um, big companies, big pharmaceuticals will, companies will say it costs us millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to try, and produce a, to try and produce a drug for something. So that means we have to charge a lot of money because we've got all that investment, which of course is fine until you start thinking that means there are an awful lot of people in the world who cannot afford those tablets. So that means that they suffer. Is that fair? Should we have different prices in different countries? So pricing for pharmaceuticals is a big deal. At the moment, one of the biggest deals is things like AIDS treatments in Africa. So if you price them at a full price, then the African population would not be able to buy them. And so therefore that might run money into problems. So ethical decisions, we don't have to do this, not breaking the law by charging a high price, but maybe we shouldn't do it. Maybe we should charge a lower price. All industries have to worry about health and safety. Again, making sure that they don't do the bare minimum. They have to make sure their employees are looked after. Now, there's a number of different ways when we're talking about ethics that we can look at things. We can look at things from the shareholders' view or the stakeholders' view. Shareholders are the owners of the company. They're basically interested in money. But notice what it says. It says, ethics technically is bad for business. Because the more, you, the more ethical you are, you will turn away customers, you'll spend more on those customers, you'll pay extra to suppliers, it'll be bad for the bottom line. So all we should do is do the minimum you have to. Comply with the law and no more than that. But if we look at things from the wider point of view, we think to ourselves, well, the company is not just about the shareholders. 
it also includes the employees, the local residents, etc., etc., then maybe we could say that ethics is good for business because, as we said earlier, ethical companies will get more customers and they will get the best employees. So, therefore, it's actually in their own interest to be ethical. Even if it's not in their own interest, the moral view says that being ethical is the right thing to do anyway. As human beings, we should always try and do the right thing, even if we don't have to. So being ethical means exactly the same thing. Now, a hundred years ago, the balance was very much with the shareholder view. Ethics is bad, we're here to make money. It's now shifted towards the ones on the other side, on the right. The, share, the stakeholder view, ethics is actually good. 